There's too much media today. It's too hard to find anything to watch. I think there's so much that the quality is going downhill. This is United A-Holes, a video cast discussing cultural topics with no filter. So I think there's too much goddamn garbage on the internet between Google Play Music, YouTube, Apple this, <laughs> Apple that, iTunes this, fucking us. Everywhere you look, there's Every, four assholes four. talking about something. There's too much, too much stuff, and I think it is totally killing the quality. I mean, look, we're shooting with a budget here of like nothing, and we're putting it up like we're big stars of some type, and there's like, Terrible movie. They made Atlantic Rim, for Christ's sakes, and put it on Netflix because Pacific Rim was done, you know, with millions of dollars. Atlantic Rim was done with hundreds of dollars. <laughs> Are you Please. fucking kidding me? No. Atlantic no, Rim. it's a thing. They it's did a that thing. for a long time, though. That has nothing to do with it's true, nowadays. But it's just... Yeah. Not, just... Before there was a guard, I'll admit, maybe they guarded us from stuff that was safe. And it was like, you know, they don't want us to get to the too edgy of rock and roll and they don't want us to get too edgy of movies and they want to limit the amount of F-bombs and everything else in, in, in a movie or a TV show. But I really feel that the gatekeepers of yore filtered out a lot of the crap so we ended up getting just pristine good quality content for a long period of time. Maybe it started to get gamed. Maybe it was too much of a gatekeeping exercise. But I really feel that without that curation going on, that we're just getting surrounded in terrible content. Very bleh, music. Shower curtains. I'm wondering how much of this is rose-colored glasses and how much of it is you just don't like the content anymore. That could be. I'm not dis I'm convince me. Well, I, I don't know, I guess. Prove okay. me I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Without going through quite an extensive list of do you like this do you not like this right how does that rate against society blah 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 it's gonna be hard to prove but are you at the point where kids these days don't know good fucking music when they hear it not at all stage not at all or so, i'll give you an example you only remember the quality music that you listen to because the ones you listened to and didn't like you forgot about that could be that could be but at the same time there's stuff getting released that doesn't even meet the standard regardless of taste that's what I'm kind of getting at. So let, let's put it in context of this way. Before, if an album was going to go to the point of getting pressed and put it into a record shop or a CD store or, or whatever, pre-streaming, pre-internet era, or a movie was going to get made and streamed or put on at a theater or released to VHS or whatever, most times, at least the quality of the content, as in the production value, had to meet a standard. Almost always. It may not be a movie that you liked. It may not be an album you liked. It may not be a band that you liked. But you could be well guaranteed that the standards would be met because in order to do that, there was a there was a jump that you had to make through to get to a, a release, a physical release. But with the digital distribution system and self-distribution being possible, a kid with less microphone than this in their basement can make a recording and post it wherever. And I think that's great. But the fact that there's no spot to identify premium versus sub-premium is, I guess, what I would say. You could say that Netflix is supposed to be the, the barrier of, you know, we'll show you what's good and we'll hold out what's not. But I don't feel that they're doing that either. If they can get something cheap enough to fill out the library, they put it up. Okay, that's my take on it. You guys are looking at me like I have three heads. No, no I'm, I'm forming no. many questions yeah. and trying to hope that I remember every single one of them because I need to get some context from you before I start okay. nailing you. Um, I'm going to say yeah, the, the medium that you choose to absorb your media is going to dictate the range and quality. Like you said, if you, if you compare YouTube to theatrical <laughs> releases, absolutely. you're absolutely going to say yes, the quality is a lot less. Right. But if you look at theatrical releases to theatrical releases, I don't think the quality has changed all that much. And if you look at straight to DVD, that's been happening ever since there's been DVDs. True. Um, you bring up Atlantic Rim as an example. That shit's been happening a long time. I've fallen prey to that. You go to the movie store thinking of a name. You can't remember the exact title. Oh, well, there it is. It's something close. You take it home. It's like, I thought so-and-so was in this. 
And then you realize, no, no, this is a studio duping the unaware's consumer. They got their money. Right. Right? They don't care that you didn't like it. Right. They put a bullshit name against it. Oh, well. And they keep doing it. So I, I, that's been happening a very long time. And, and I'll, I'll be the first to also back up and say I consume a lot of digital media and I've never been happier with the fact that things are so readily available. I'm just annoyed with spending so much time filtering through the garbage to get to something that I like. <clears throat> There's a lot of time spent in that. And specific, I should back up and, and say I'm specifically probably my opinion's more aimed at the music side than anything. I find it so... New Release Friday is a thing now. It used to be Tuesdays, I think. Yeah. Right? When you worked in the record stores and stuff, it was yeah. a Tuesday. Now it's turned to new, new Release Friday. Every Friday morning I get up, I pop on my headphones, I go on my streaming service, and I go, show me what's new. And I go in, and it's... There's nothing there that I would even deem releasable for the most part, unless it's like... It's a, it's a one out of a hundred or less. And this is stuff that's being put on major streaming services. We're not talking like, you know, not to shoot it down. I think Bandcamp is a brilliant thing and there's a bunch of independent release areas like that and Sound, SoundCloud and other stuff. But we're talking Google Play, iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify, etc. And it's so hard to filter through that. And I don't think their curation engines are any no. any good. But I think, again, you got to look at the medium. You're, you're comparing <clears throat> YouTube to theatrical release again. Because the streaming services don't care. They want that play because they're going to pay an ad on it or they're going to have a subscriber like you just getting new content. Right. They're, they're making their money. They don't care about the quality as long as it... Okay. Okay. It's really, really bad. It'll but, get hits anyway. Yeah. Because people will or, see right. what's okay, okay, so, so now, but I'll back up the piece that's missing. There is no curation anymore. So studio still yes, exists. Yes, there is. <clears throat> right? I assume I'm not a music person so you correct now? me if I'm studio still exists you still go to your there are a lot, Columbia's your there are a lot MG, smaller yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah BMG so if you put Tony. your curation list to major studio releases only I think you'll find that the quality is there but you might not like it agreed agreed I guess I could, I could see that point but I think a lot of the smaller labels that used to put out what I consider to be the premier content that I like don't exist anymore no, because they got eaten by so many right. streaming services. And the fact that they, they were just above the home recording technology, the, the home entrepreneur. So the home studio has now taken their slice of the pie away. The big studios have shrunk, obviously, because that also took a hit out of them. Right. But they still exist because they're behemoths. You know, maybe much smaller behemoths, but they're still behemoths right, in the industry. But that that would be my take on the music side of it. The video side of it, I mean, don't get me wrong, we've had some brilliant stuff, and there's even through YouTube, there's some brilliant, brilliant stuff like uh, the, all the YouTube uh, premium content, good game with the game grumps, stuff like yeah. that. Like, there's been some really cool stuff put out. The, uh, what is it, Slow Mo Guys just put a new series out, Slow Mo Around the World or whatever they called it, then yeah, okay. Iceland and did all this yeah, stuff. I love and those it's, guys. It's only through the premium, which I have and I enjoy. I think it's great. Is that still YouTube Red? Was that a thing? They, Red's gone. That's now YouTube Premium. That's what they're calling it. Not so. RedTube. Not RedTube. Not the porn site. Don't get started. He's looking at me like I'm crazy. I don't know that site. <laughs> well, the sites that he goes to is all premium content in his mind. <laughs> <laughs> I go to RedTube all the time. There's nothing that disappoints me it's in his mind. How do I tip the girl on the TV? <laughs> Just the tip. Gentle fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You get you got your lineup now. You gonna fire it? Fire yeah, it? I've forgotten some of it, but I'm gonna go. <laughs> I, because I should be seriously. I'm gonna bring a notepad and and a fucking pencil next week and be like, oh. <laughs> You'll be watching Brent write on paper, or I'll do it on my tablet because it does the same thing. But anyway, um, okay. There are still gatekeepers, and I will give you a prime example. We the, we we're it. We are the gatekeepers now. We're the ones going. And I'll give you a prime example. I said I was never going to have a Netflix account. Are you kidding me? I pay for television to come in here and I pay for internet and yada, yada, yada. I'm not having, and like, well, they give you 30 days for free. It's free. Well, whatever. Mark Nicholson on Facebook. Watching Stranger Things. Absolutely love it. They nail it. It's so good. They, they grab that arrow and like, Stranger Things, what the hell is this? And Mark Nick said, I'm probably going to like it. Tell my wife about it. No, never heard about it. Let's fire it up. Let's try it. 
man, that is awesome. I proceed to pass that along to my son. You've got to watch this. You're going to love this. Michael watched it. Oh, it's fantastic. He tells his girlfriend, you've got to watch Stranger Things. I don't know if I'm going to. No, watch it. Watch it. A couple episodes in. I'm hooked. Let's go. When's the second season come out? It's, we got to get this watched because it's being released soon. I did not see ads on TV. I did not hear ads on the radio. I know that they did exist. I know that they did promo it. So, I mean, there is a certain amount of that going on. I found out about it from somebody else who I watched it and then other people found out because right. I'm saying this is quality content. This is something I know that you're going to enjoy. You grew up in the 80s. That's the era they're in and they do it masterfully. Plus, it's a good, it's a well-crafted story. Um, so there are gatekeepers, gatekeepers. It's just that it has switched from people saying you should buy this because you listen to that. And then you should buy this because you listen to that. I have a wall of cassettes in my garage. You know, the, the wooden yeah. boxes, you guys probably sold them at the store that were like so big by so big and you put the cassettes in them. I have, one, two, three, four, I have about six of those, I believe, or at least enough cassettes to fill them. And because there's a certain amount of, uh, you know, uh, I never listen to them anymore. They're just there to just take up space. But they're in the garage and they're not bothering anything. I bought stuff solely based on, all right, well, there's that one song on the radio I like. I should buy that again. Wow, this is crap. I should have just recorded that song off the radio because I've been a pirate for a long time. <laughs> um and I still have the I still have you know like recorded off the radio with the DJ. Just Did you love the pirate movie. It was rated R. Uh, of course it was. <laughs> oh God! If we're doing oh, that God. Jokes. God. <laughs> What's Stop. the pirate's favorite but letter? Grass. R. R be a fine letter, but the pirate's first love is always the sea. <laughs> You're done, goof. <laughs> good stuff. Well, good. Good stuff. So, all right, so I get I, you. So I, what you're telling me is none of my friends have a good taste in music because no one's recommending shit musically. It's all just... No? Of, yes, but no. alternatively, you give me great things to listen to. Now, Thanks, you, I'm the curator. You're the curator. You're the gatekeeper. I've listened to more new music because of him <laughs> than I have in probably the rest of my life. If you want to switch over to music, I have a whole other opinion on that as Bring well. It. With mm -hmm. the... You, you, you mentioned the, the amount that's basically what you're talking about. There was so much of it, and I have to filter down through it. You're talking for yourself, and to get to the to the good stuff. Um, I have found bands, singers, uh, you know, people doing cover tunes and stuff like that. Um, there was, uh, see, I suck at remembering people's names, but there was a guy that did a remake uh, of Ignition, and I had never, I had never listened. To ignition so i was not aware of the song i know it was a big hit for i believe r kelly and it was like all right well this here's this kid um he's got the floppy hair he's a little overweight and he's playing his guitar in his bedroom and I, it happened to come up as a suggestion on youtube or somebody had it on facebook i'm pretty sure i saw it on youtube i'm like well this ought to be worth a laugh and then i listened to the kids sing and i felt like shit because i'm like i fucking i was sitting here going like, judgmental on the judgmental on this guy I hadn't heard him even speak and it's like is there a place i can download this version because this sounds really fucking kid nailed it so yeah there's a lot of content and yes you have to filter through but i've been filtering through music my entire life mm -hmm. I've, I've bought album i bought vinyl i've bought cassettes i bought cds I downloaded illegally and legally both. Um, and, and there's times that you download, you know, country's greatest hits of the 60s and 70s. Eh, all right, fuck, let's try it. La -la -la. Mm. Oh, shit, right on. There's a song I've never heard before. It's 30 years old. It's 40 years old. It's whatever. Um, because there's so much available to us now, we are able to go down through. Because if I listen to something and go, I don't like it, it's gone. See you yeah. later. Yeah. It's not sitting on my shelf somewhere going, well, I'm going to go with that. Yeah. There's yeah. another, there's another CD. That. So having it digitally and having so much to pick from, 
and having people be able to send you a message on whatever social media platform you're on go, I know you like hair metal from the 80s, Brent. Check out Steel Panther. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. happened to me. Yeah. Now, Steel Panther, who are these guys? They're killer. They are. They're fantastic. And they're a comedy act. It's, it is, yeah. And, but, but they write songs that for that era, Poison could have been recording yeah, yeah. those songs. No, it's exactly... Better musicians than Poison ever were. <laughs> I'll fucking diss on my Poison. I was a big fucking fan. Poison and Cinderella both. I was, Did you I say was femme? Fan. Fan. Oh, okay. Fan. Sorry. All right. Like okay. I'll, I'll call. I'll call this one off. I. I still contest. I think there's too much media, but I do hear your points. <laughs> Opinion. Well, it's that old adage to getting to the point where it's so easy now to basically do anything creatively or artistically and have it thrown out there. But it's that old ad adage. You know, everybody's got a voice. Or I know you have the capability of doing it, but should you really? I mean. Because, I mean, anybody, I could go get a tape recorder right now, hit record and go, boom, boom, cha, boom, boom, cha, boom, boom, cha, boom, boom, cha. I call that one shower curtains. Writing songs is fucking easy. Just fucking <laughs> easy, right? You know? I used to have a red car, now it's a blue car. Jungle pussy. There, another one. <laughs> another hit, you know? Fuck, I could bang out songs left, right, and, and, and center, you know? But, but what really pisses me off about wait, the whole wait, music thing... Wait, before I forget, I have to say this. Please do that. Please do what? Record these songs. Record these songs. You need your own channel, because I think you're going to get like a million views. We already we already have the recording equipment right here. We can just make it happen. You, you could just grab that snippet and just... It's already going to be done. <laughs> uh, so I have an Amazon Prime Wait for Prime the post account. roll on this one. You know, I have an Amazon Prime account. And... I thought, cool, it says here, tons and tons and tons of music, right? So you punch in your favorite band, right? Here's a, here's a prime example. Punch in, say, yeah, want to listen to some Journey, right? Click on that. That one's not playing. Oh, only available with Amazon Unlimited. So here's Journey's greatest hits, right? You know, faithfully not available, you know, separate ways, worlds apart, not available, and this is just an example. Bootlicker. Oh, yeah, from their 1973 album. I can stream that all I want to, but I can't have fucking separate ways, worlds apart. I got to pay, you know, again. So what Even though I so pay wait, wait, for wait, wait, Amazon. Wait, wait. At that on. point, he stopped believing. No, <laughs> what he's told me, though, I've just realized that I have an Amazon account, so I get Amazon Music, but not Unlimited, but I have Google Play. So if I just take the new releases from Google Play, go to Amazon and look them up, and if they're not available, I should probably listen to that because it's probably <laughs> going to be good. My gatekeeper is Amazon. No, That's it's, perfect. No, it's, it's Ken. It's the because he just parallel. told you about this. There you go. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, fuck, how much more money do you want to, you know, take from me type of thing, right? All of it. <laughs> but it's, but yeah, they want you left with nothing. Uh, I know. But wait, back in the day when I was heavily involved what you haven't made yet, in music too. retail, when I was heavily involved in music retail, you could start to see the, the switch, right, of all this independent music and everything. And, you know, some guy does something, you know, records it in his mother's basement, and it's in a flyer. And the next thing you know, you've got everybody coming in looking at it. They just don't understand. What do you mean you, you can't get it in for me? You know, I, 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 I listen to this online, you know. Well, fuck the, the president of, of the record company is his father for fuck's sake, right? You know, I mean, he doesn't have a distribution deal. He doesn't, you know. So, no, it's never going to happen. You mean the only way to get this is, is basically from, from him directly, you know. He, maybe you get lucky and his address is on his fucking website. You go <laughs> knock on his door and go, hey, can I have your uh, mixtape? <laughs> Better yet, just sing the song for me and I'll just record it and then I can have video. Okay, go! <laughs> like every concert in North America. <laughs> What's your take, Ryan? How do you feel? So I'm going to go back to your, your stipulation. I think your, the key word here is too much. There is a lot more in the pursuit of getting that more you have to take the good with the bad. And I think as you go more and more and more, the, the ratio from good to bad stays is, is probably not permanent. It's probably going towards the bad a little bit more because you're, you're, you get the cream rising to the top, right? But 
again, the way you said it, too much, I don't think you'd give it up. I think you personally would rather go through some of the garbage to get that one good song yeah, that yeah. you love. Yeah, no, for sure. Than not hear that band ever. No, for sure. I, I agree. Holy fuck, Sensei. Somebody get him a pebble so I can try and snatch it from his <laughs> fucking hand. <laughs> get him some chopsticks. There's going to be flies here in a couple months. <laughs> Jesus. And Brent, what's your take? Call me Grasshopper. <laughs> when you get through the crap and find the pearl, you understand why you had to dig. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that from? <laughs> I just made it up. His ass. Strictly <laughs> <laughs> out of his ass is where that came from. And it was Every brilliant. Every single thing is remixed. I just took all of that and distilled it into Every time we go through, into that. it's a little shorter. That's right. <laughs> More condensed. It hurts when I sit down. It hurts when I sit down. That was called directly from his ass. <laughs> Songs left, right, and and, and center.